it's critically important that the GOP regains majorities in both the House and the Senate in the fall. After two years of total Democratic control, this country is falling apart, dangerously so. Look at the stock market today. It tanked yet again. Inflation at a 42-year high. Interest rates now going up through the roof. This is really crushing everyone in this country, especially the poor, the middle class, uh, our fellow Americans on fixed incomes. And now top economists are calling stagflation, quote, unavoidable. The CEO of Wells Fargo saying there is no question bad days are ahead. Analyst Morgan Stanley, smart people. They're blaming the Biden administration for their inflation. And even far left Vox is blasting Joe's out of control spending. And it gets even worse. Today, yet once again, gas prices shooting to the moon. And today, another brand new record high uh, price for a gallon of gasoline. In fact, every day for the past nine days, gas prices set one new record after another. Now, this year, American families will have to fork over anywhere between $5,200 to $5,700 and going higher thanks to Joe Biden's inflation. 2000 by the way if you drive a car you're going to pay $2000 more on average just for gasoline this year over when Donald Trump was president and of course the administration likes to blame all of our problems on corporations and Vladimir Putin and something they're calling ultra maga oh you mean when gas prices were cheap the border was under control well, operation warp speed actually worked and we didn't run out of tests after 2 years uh, and every other disaster from Afghanistan to the war in Europe. This week, Biden's new press secretary didn't seem to know uh, who, who to blame or what to say. It was not a good start. Take a look. How does raising taxes on corporations lower the cost of gas, the cost of a used car, the cost of food for everyday Americans? So look, I think we encourage those who have done very well, right, especially those who care about climate change uh, to support a fair ta tax code that doesn't change, that doesn't charge manufacturers, workers, cops, builders, a higher percentage of their earnings, that the most fortunate people in our nation and not let this, this, that stand in the way of reducing energy costs and fighting this ex existential problem, if you think about that as an example, and to support basic collective bargaining rights as well, right? That's also important. But look, it is, you know, by not, if, without having a fair tax code, which is what I'm talking about, then all, every, like manufacturing workers, cops, you know, it's not fair for them to have to pay higher taxes than the folks that, who are, who are, who are not paying taxes at all. Forget that word salad you just heard. Take a look at your screen. Look at Quinnipiac. 2%, that's right, 2% of Americans now believe our economy is in excellent shape, and they know just who to blame. A whopping 63% blame Joe Biden, uh, our ultra failure of a president. Want to talk about ultra? He's an ultra failure. By the way, his approval rate, look at that, is at 32%. Over the past year and a half, as Americans have suffered from a supply chain crisis, now a baby formula shortage, spiking inflation, spiking gas prices, a stock market in a free fall, the Biden administration, oh, well, they were busy, busy tackling the real crisis, disinformation. In fact, they spent a considerable amount of time and energy and effort to develop a brand new ministry of truth that we've been talking about to police all of your thoughts. We do have great news tonight. The Ministry of Truth, or Disinformation Governance Board, as it was coined, is now on pause. And that far-left lunatic tapped to lead this shady new venture has now resigned. And as it turns out, former disinformation czar Nina Jankowicz was one of the biggest perpetrators and purveyors of disinformation in the entire country. Now, she praised... Russian disinformation dossier author Christopher Steele. She accused President Trump of being a Russian plant. She referred to the Hunter Biden laptop scandal as a debunked Trump campaign product. Uh, and like many other prominent Democrats, Nina Jankowicz is a conspiracy theorist who wants all Americans to believe her twisted opinions and lies are facts. Now, today, when asked about the disinformation czar's resignation, well, Biden's press secretary was once again short on answers. Take a look. 
So if it's pausing because you think the board was mischaracterized, then the disinformation board is being shut down because of disinformation? Is that what's happening here? Look, I mean, the, the board was put forth for a purpose, right? To make sure that we really did, a t a, a really did address what was happening across the country when it came to disinformation. And it's okay it's to all, wait now, but no, it's, it's just it's going, it's, it's going to pause. There's been a mischaracterizations from outside, uh, outside forces. And so now what we're gonna do is gonna, we're gonna pause it and we're going to do an assessment. But the work, does, the work doesn't stop. We're still going to continue the work. They're going to work. So the, is it alive or is it gone? Anyway, does anyone in the Biden administration have a straight answer for anything? Do they, they, do they take any responsibility? Have they ever heard of the phrase, the buck stops here? Now, keep in mind, even on lucid days, President Biden is totally incompetent. His DHS secretary cares more about policing your thoughts than securing our border. His Treasury Secretary is a lunatic who told us inflation was transitory. His vice president, totally in over her head, inept, and she never really seems to know what she's talking about. Take a look. That is especially true when it comes to the climate crisis, which is why we will work together and continue to work together to address these issues, to tackle these challenges, and to work together as we continue to work operating from the new norms, rules, and agreements that we will convene to work together on. We'll all work together. That's the plan. Biden administration is a disaster on every single level, and November, frankly, can't come soon enough. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.